nearly forgot to show you this but this is the caramel that I've added to the bottom of the dish and I've just started laying up the halves of apples that I used um, that I cut earlier now you'll see me I'm just lining up the apples like I did before when I was measuring how many I needed and so we should get them settled in place and make sure that we have the right amount. And these are just the halves of the Granny Smith's apples that I showed you before. Just fill it up, really pack it with the apples so that when they soften, they don't move around too much. So these are the side pieces that I cut down um, that you saw earlier. And all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them together in the freezer and when I make some more tart tartan, cut the sides down again, and then I will line these up in a nice little pattern all the way around the side so that um, I can make another tart with this. Or of course you can use these for apple crumble or apple sauce, whatever you want to do with them, but make sure you hang on to them, put them in the freezer. Now with these pies, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the oven for a short period of time just to soften the apples before we cover the whole thing in pastry. see I put some of the caramel sauce on top of the apples just to let them sit next to the pastry. That's an optional thing, you don't have to do that, that's just something that I've chosen to do. All I'm going to do now is put the pastry on top, press it down around the edges and pop it in the oven. Whenever I've eaten tart tatin, I always find it really nice when you get a chunk of pastry with the apple and the caramel, which is why I don't mind having that excess in those corners. There we go, it's nicely covered, tucked in at the ends, around the edges. <laughs> 